Hey everybody, welcome into PartsCountingGuru.com. I am going to take you through a few simple steps today on how to change out the outside seat cover panel for the electronics on the electronic seat adjust control on a 2018 Hyundai Sonata. My father-in-law is well over six feet in height, and I do believe that by the way that he was getting in and out of this vehicle, where he uses his hand for leverage to get in and out, has caused one of the contact points that holds this thing in place to break. So we're gonna take you through a few simple steps on how to change this out, how you can save money doing it yourself, as well as we're going to take you through the process of dismounting all the electronics, the tools that is required to do that, and we're gonna start this here pretty soon. But first, if you like this video and it's been useful to you and you wanna see more videos like this, please, at the end of this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and that is youtube.com forward slash parts counter gurus and give us a thumbs up and ring that bell and tell a friend. So all of this is going to start right after this. Okay, everybody this is the component that I'm talking about this is the piece it's basically just a it's it, it falls under the category of interior panels um, if you're going to look for this product or describe this to your dealership in order to purchase this thing so as I was telling you my father-in-law uses the leverage here to get in and out of this vehicle and by doing so it has caused this piece to fracture and break off and so it, it can't stay in place anymore. So basically what I'm having to do is remove all of the electronics and then also remount the electronics. And we're gonna take you few, through a few steps to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. Um, the, the couple of things that you need to be aware of that you're gonna to need to do this job, this is pretty important. It, it's, it's quite simple. Um, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver or a trim tool that you can purchase at any of an aftermarket auto parts store. You could buy it through the dealership, but it's a specialty tool and it would cost you a significant amount of money to do that. So it's best that you really go to your local auto parts store and they can get you anything you need. But you can also use just a standard flat blade screwdriver, but it is recommended that take your some electrical tape and you can wrap around this, the, the point that's gonna make contact with whatever body component. That way you're not scratching or ruining the component. Um, that way you can peel it back off when you're finished. But vinyl tape or electrical tape works perfect. It's got a soft contact and it'll be just fine. The other thing that you're gonna need, and I'm telling you this because there's nothing that I found that is going to tell you that this is the type of the size of the tool that you're going to need but it's a special tool it is a torx bit it is a t20 and you will need that to remove the screws in the electronics so that's pretty important so um before we get started i'm going to go over a few things on how i was able to locate the part so hang in there and we'll get you the information you need on that so hold on just a second we'll be right back okay guys like I said, before we really get started on replacing this piece, I wanted to tell you what I had to go through in order to find the right part. Um, you've heard me and Keith say over and over again how important it is to have your VIN number handy because we guarantee you with a component specifically like this, because there are so many models and trims, VIN numbers give you the DNA of the vehicle and it's important that you have that so you can make sure you get the right part when you order it. In fact, when I started looking for this part um, without the VIN number, I would not have found it. So you can locate your VIN number, as I've told you before. It's right here in, in the pillar on the front driver's side, on, on the front driver's side, or you can get it under the uh, windshield, also on the front driver's side, just above the hood area there and on the cowl area. So. I use a program called All Data Pro. 
Um, it's an online program. I do a lot of research with it, but you can also research all of the components that you need for the engine, for the body panels, for just about anything on this vehicle, you can find it on All Data Pro because it is a shared network of all manufacturers that give this information to All Data Pro so that service centers around the globe can have access to these part numbers and they can easily order these parts. Plus you can also get the labor the amount of labor time, um, the rate is what your shop charges or the dealership charges, but is the amount of book time that it will take that has been um, recorded to replace a component like this. Um, this particular component uh, called for right at an hour to replace. So if you're at a dealership, they usually get a premium. You're probably talking about oh, roughly between $100 and $140 in labor just to replace this piece plus the part itself. So if you're doing this yourself, you can save yourself, you know, at least a hundred dollars and that's a significant saving. So that's why it's important to do your research to see if you can do these things yourself. Now, I could not find the part number on alldatapro.com, um, but I was able to get some specific instructions on how to remove the piece and what the piece is actually called. And this was called the uh, inside, excuse me, outside, front seat panel. There's also an inside front seat panel, which is on the inside next to the console. That was not the piece that we needed. So this was the piece we needed. It was the outside uh, panel. I called the dealership. The first thing he asked me for was the last eight numbers of the VIN. And the, the digits I gave him, he, he gave me the component part number and he gave me the price, which was around $45 which is pretty good, not a bad price for that. And again, it was not under warranty because it was not covered by any warranty that covers that because it was a broken piece and not a wearable part. So therefore it didn't fall under the warranty program and there was no recall on it. So we're left to do this ourselves. So now we're gonna get into this. We're gonna replace this thing. So hang in there and we'll be right back. Okay guys, now we're gonna remove the, uh, the, the, the faulty uh, panel and replace it with, with, with the new one that we got here from the dealership. Um, I would like to add that when you're dealing with uh, parts like this to replace on your vehicle, I would really try to steer away from aftermarket if, if at all possible. Um, unless it's not something that is, if, if it's not an exact fit, then maybe not. But this is a pretty exact fit for the seat design as well as the electronics that have to mount into it. So it is really important that you get something that is an exact fit and really the best way to overcome any challenges in that regard would be to order it from the dealership like we did. And again, for 45 bucks, it's, it's not, that, not that significant of a price. So um, again, what happened was it snapped here and uh, that's the, the broken part. Um, and what, what it is right in this area right here, this particular piece slides on and off of this this bracket here right here there's another contact point here that broke off that goes over this piece and then you have these that slip in here that also broke off so we have to get all of these things out of there and get it mounted and i'm going to do that um, so let's get started with that if you were to have to pry this off again like i said with the electrical tape so that you're not damaging anything when you're making contact you would want to pop this loose and then you would slide forward and pull this off so let's just assume that we had already done that and we had you have one electrical connector this is the um the connector that connects to the electronics, the, adjust, the seat adjuster electronics here. It's real simple, there's a tab here, you just push down and this comes right out and it frees this up. Now what I have to do is remove the electronics. Um, and in order to do that, on this side, you've got this button, this, this, this adjuster button here that, will, that actually will slip through this hole, so that's not a problem, but you have to remove these guys. Um, don't yank on it, but give it a little, little bit of a pry, and they pop off like that, okay? Um, likewise, on this one, a li little bit of a pry here, and they come off fairly easy, 
and you'll feel it when it happens and it just comes right off. You don't want to yank on it too hard because it's, it's, it's injection molded plastic and it has contact points and it will wear on you and they will break. So then you, then you have to buy these guys. We're okay there. This is the actual switches contact points here. So it's, it's really important that when you pull this stuff off, that you make sure that these contact points are still in good shape, that it's got good, good spring, good resistance. Everything looks fine with the component itself. So now we're ready to remove this piece. T20 Torx bit is gonna get us rolling here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing out of here and um, get this thing replaced. So we will be back in about, oh, five minutes, and then we'll put this stuff back together and we'll show the project completed. Okay, so now I'm going to put the levers back on. And again, like I said, you've got contact points that are, that are molded into this thing. So you're gonna find this contact point on this one first and put it in there. And then you just, you hear it snap in, there's two contact points. We're gonna do likewise on the lumbar. Again, this is the pivot contact point. This is the contact point of the switch right there on the inside. So this goes, like this you want to go on the on the pivot point first snap in boom snapped in there you go now we hook the electronics back up okay pretty simple not hard now you want to test it to make sure yep see the seats moving so all the all the electronics are definitely working we're good i didn't mess with anything there i want to go back over with you why we're replacing this this broke. This is this piece which goes over this bracket here. That you slide this back once you have this piece right here that goes over this piece. It also broke off. And then you have a couple of other panel points that snap into a, a pre-existing part here that it could break, but it, it appears to be part of the main seat back. So I think we're okay there. So I'm going to give this a whirl. And don't laugh if I don't make it, but I'm going to try it. And again, you're going to go over. And just like that, we have a replaced piece. All the, all the contact points are good, seats working, everything's fine, and that's great. So, I just saved my father-in-law about $140. The part was cheap enough, easy to do, so we've got a great piece that's been replaced, it's been done, just like brand new, and he'll be happy. So, he might even buy me a beer after this. We'll have to wait and see. So, um, Give me just a few minutes, we'll get back with you and we'll wrap up and tell you a few other things. So hang in there. Okay, everybody, there you go. I hope that uh, this demonstration of how easy to replace a component if you do your homework can be for you. It can save you a lot of money. This is what Keith and I preach to you guys all the time to do your homework, save yourself some cash, man. And the bottom line is you don't always have to go to the dealership, but there are certain components that you definitely do want to go to the dealership for. This was one of those components that we needed to go to the dealership in order to make sure that it fit right. Um, if this video was at all helpful to you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash parts count of gurus. Follow us over on Instagram at instagram.com and that would be the parts count of gurus. If you would like to, you can check us out on Twitter. We're at twitter.com and our handle there is at the counter show. 
You can check us out on Facebook. We're at facebook.com, Parts County Gurus. That's forward slash Parts County Gurus. While you're on any of those, please like us, thumbs up, ring bells, share, tell a friend, do everything you can to help support this show for us. We really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Your subscriptions are free to you, but they are priceless to us. Plus, Keith and I have a little contest going on with the likes. Give me all the likes. Don't worry about Keith. Give them to me. I want those likes. So check out our podcast too. You can go to partscounterguru.com and look at the podcast link and you can subscribe to our podcast. We are on every platform out there to include Spotify, Apple, Google, you name it, we are there. We would love to have you on board as a member of our audience. Keep checking us out. Keep supporting us. And until next time, take care.